I did believe it was the Jericho Cruise, unfortunately. It was the duck boats, and I got the trapped in it. <laughs> what happened on the duck boat? Well, I, I saw it, and it was headed out towards the water, and there were some guys on it who were wearing bikinis, so I thought it must have been the cruise that everyone's been talking about. So I got on it, next thing you knew, I was out in the bay, and... Next thing after that, you knew I was somewhere down south of Antigua. Oh, Lord. Was your, uh, your duck boat wasn't hijacked, was it? Oh, it was it was hijacked, low-jilled, and any other way you want to put it. So who was, your, uh, who was the pilot there, uh, the Captain Sully? <laughs> yeah. Is it the great Sully? Is he now riding it duck was, boats? It's, it's, he's really let himself go. Oh, no. See, Michael Malley called it. He thought he was drinking in that, uh, well, Michael, the person Michael Malley played. Or maybe Michael Malley does work for uh, the uh, flight intelligence community. I don't From know. From Guts? From Guts, yeah. Moe's friend. Michael Malley. Wow. He was in Sully. You didn't see Sully? No, of course I didn't. I'm banned from seeing any Clint Eastwood movies. And I have been <laughs> ever since Gran Torino came out and I got thrown into jail for cheering so loud at the beginning parts. <laughs> you mean when those kids were getting killed? Yeah, all that. Well, and you know, just I, I really respected the man Clint Eastwood was before they uh, poisoned his brain. I I respected the man Clint Eastwood was when he was talking to a chair pretending it was Obama. But anyways, every episode of Pillow Talk takes place live from our king size bed, and today we had to make a little space in the king size bed. We had to move the uh, fully loaded Doritos, the uh, sweet chili Doritos. All the all the Ritos to make room for our boy from Virtual Pros who's blessed us today. Uh, tell us what it is, Mike. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Mike, and I'm very happy to be on this king size bed with two yeah. other men of varying ages. My, That's no, right. We are various ages, but they're pretty <laughs> close together. It turns out. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, a Uncle recent Howard, reveal. Howard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and What's Uncle that? Howard have a Manny and Luke situation, actually, from Modern <laughs> Family. He's 27, <laughs> and I'm 30 years young. Oh, I, I thought he—I thought, I thought he was just lying about that. He no, <laughs> he's, he's a young guy. Uh, what What happened was Franklin's grandmother adopted me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so exactly I am her happened. son, and thus must be his uncle. Exactly, and, and one hell of an uncle too, might, might I add. One <laughs> hell of an uncle. So, as you know, we always pick a movie before me and my uncle fall asleep in our bed. You don't have to fall asleep with us to any movies, but I still think you could help us out with one. You're encouraged to, though. <laughs> you are <laughs> encouraged to. My choice is a very obvious one, since today is about the Jericho Cruise. I'm going to be talking about a cruise that's a little, has a little more women on it. It's called, uh, well, it's the movie's called Boat Trip with Horatio Sands and Cuba Gooding Jr. You know, it was a cruise meant for gay men that still had a lot more women in bikinis. In fact, they had the Swedish bikini team. <laughs> that's still a lot more than the women Jericho advertised. I'm not going to get into that just yet. Uh, I love Cuba Gooding Jr. I thought this was a, a real tour de force for him. And uh, I think it propelled them to radio, actually, and which was another just a great film, very smart, you know, made for intellectuals. So that's my choice is Boat Trip. So, Howard, you got any for us? Well, I do actually have a film because we are talking about Chris Jericho today. And so I selected a film in which he has a brief cameo. It is the movie MacGruber. MacGruder? Or MacGruber. Okay, yes. I was confused the Miami Heat guard. Sorry about that. Uh, Never that's a smart him. movie too. It is. Explosion. Got yeah. a lot of thinking in it. Got a lot of thinking in it. He's a thinking man, that Magruder. Magruber, sorry. Gosh, yeah, NBA Never basketball. catch him sleeping. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, there's a great scene where he was uh, writing. He had the license plate number of somebody who uh, what like cut him off, 
and he just like wrote it very manically. I thought it was great. That's right. Yeah, it's my favorite right. scene. So, Mike, you got? Do you have a Blu-ray or a ultraviolet DVD I, for us to watch tonight? I do. It's a little deep cut, but you guys struck me as Joe Montana fans, so <laughs> maybe maybe you've already seen this. But it's uh, from 2002. It's a movie I saw in the movie theaters called Uncle Nino. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, an overworked executive, uh, Robert Michelli, played by Golden Globe nominee Joe Montana. Uh, has little time for his loving wife, Academy Award nominee Ann Archer. Whoa! Uh, yes. And uh, rebellious 14-year-old Bobby, who was a kid that was in Jurassic Park 3. And uh, 12-year-old daughter, Gina Montana, who's uh, <laughs> Joe Montana's daughter. Apparently, Keeping in it in the life. family there. Yes. Uh, who desperately wants a dog. The, this disconnected family is transformed by long-lost Uncle Nino. Uh, he's played by some Italian guy, an old world <laughs> oh. Italian who unexpectedly uh, arrives on their doorstep for a visit. Nino's simple old fashioned ways make him a curiosity to the neighborhood <laughs> and an embarrassment to the, to Robert. <laughs> but Nino is slowly able to connect with each member of the family and teach Robert how to enjoy life's simple pleasures. Uh, good food, good music, and most important, La Familia. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Nino is that rare family film whose simple story and gentle humor can be enjoyed at all ages. Wasn't what? there an oh. Uncle Nino on uh, the Jersey Shore? <laughs> there, there might have been. I don't know. Wasn't I feel there that, was. That Maybe was... The same uh, um, uh, it was bam. Vinny's uncle. Yeah, and he hung out with uh, a Lil Wayne that one time. <laughs> what? <laughs> it was on their know. show. He, now he referred to himself Lil as Wayne the was real nice. <laughs> this Uncle Nino to referred them. to himself as the original Guido, actually. So <laughs> no, he's, yeah. he's he's yeah, but not this Uncle Nino. He's a kind old man. <laughs> okay, okay. So you got well, the kid from Jurassic Park out. three. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty star studded. You know what? And it encourages family values, which we were all about at Pillow Talk. Joe so, Montana. Uh, <laughs> I love there, huh? Joe Montana. Is that a is that a gold member impression there? <laughs> is, that, is that your press gold member? Yeah. Uh, okay, so we got a hell of a movie. Uh, Mike, you are a bit of a you. You're a former New York guy. You do the Virtual Pros podcast, one of my uh, favorite wrestling podcasts. Might I add, it's uh, very smart. Um, there's something I want to uh, give Al the third degree about, but he's not with us, so that's <laughs> fine. Uh, you're a former New York guy, and I and I issued a ban recently on Michael Rappaport from appearing on our podcast. And I uh, rescinded not... that ban immediately. <laughs> are are you are you, are you still now that you're in Chicago? Are you still a New York guy? Do you still like hey Rappaport's all right? He's not that bad. <laughs> hey, guys. he's a good shit. Uh, <laughs> he's good shit. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely uh, I I um I. I can deal with how Michael Rappaport is because that's where I'm from. I'm from that area, so his okay. t- his certain flavor of a uh, of a uh, <laughs> attitude, I guess, it it, it mm-hmm. doesn't af- it doesn't affect me. I wouldn't say I'm a Michael Rappaport guy, so right. I, I but do, you're I do unfazed. Fu- yeah, I'm unfazed. It's you know it's whatever. I he's just one of those guys that like and um he's gonna be like 65 years old and no one's gonna remember why they even know Michael Rappaport and he's just gonna be known as some New York guy and that's all people know him for that's true and I don't even know how old he is by the way like I have zero clue I have like the broadest estimate of like you know <laughs> 40 to 60 essentially you know like there's really he could fall anywhere there like, yeah, yeah. He, sounds he about was, right he was pretty good at MTV Rock and Jock <laughs> was he good yeah. oh that hurts he that could, hurts. That that adds some legitimacy to him, actually. The, that, the that kid ball. can ball. Uh, but you know what takes away his actual legitimacy? He was in Inside Out with Triple H. So, Ooh, and Parker Posey. Oh. <laughs> you know, yes. So that that kind of takes away quite a bit. This wasn't breaking the rules with Edge and Jamie Kennedy. This is they a always bad movie. say that Parker Posey is the omen of a dying film career. Yeah. If yeah, you're in well, a movie that... with her, say goodbye. Ha, huh, Kevin Spacey? Oh, God. It was the, I don't know if Inside Out even counts, if that actually made it. we got to find it out counts. how many how many WWE films actually made it to the theaters, you know? Obviously, See No Evil, you know, and whatever. The Condemned. Ones. 
Right, and 12 the rounds. Marine. 12 yeah, rounds. The, the first Marine, yeah. and probably 12 rounds won, you know. But after that, that's a that's a big hiatus. A- haven't there been some WWE films that just haven't had wrestlers in them that people look at Oh, a yeah, bit? There, there's always a couple of them. Yeah, Oculus. Yeah. Oculus has no wrestlers in it. It's probably the oh. best movie. <laughs> I wonder why. That's weird. <laughs> it's a strange. That, there's that Whitney Houston movie. Not Whitney Houston, a Halle Berry movie. Yes, but David Otunk is in that for a oh, moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking that same one, but no. David Otunga was in it. I mean, just very briefly. So, <laughs> But yeah, it's a similar situation. Oh, man. So anyways, I, I guess transitioning from WWE... Let's get right to it, guys. The Chris Jericho Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea. This was, you know, I don't want to call it a disaster. You want a disaster, you watch Shipmates with Chris Hardwick, that old dating show. That always went wrong. And that's, you know, this, you know, when you hear, when you heard about the Jericho Cruise, it was right after Hurricane Irma. So, like, the first thing he does after Hurricane Irma destroys, like, parts of Miami is... Hey, let's do a hurricane. I mean, let's do a cruise here. And then he has the nerve to say, oh, the weather's going to be great. I checked. I checked a year in advance somehow. Thanks, Chris. You know, uh, I mean, how do you feel about this, Howard? You wanted to go on there. I mean, how do you feel? Well, I, I, first of all, before I say anything else, I want to offer my sincere congratulations to Chris Jericho on his most successful cruise that he has yet run. Now... I am a good friends with Chris Jericho, and I no, want everybody okay. to know that. Okay. I call him Chris Irvine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go. So, so you're all about this cruise. I mean, it was supposed to have comedy, it, rock and roll. It wrestling. had it all. Mm, it, was, it was supposed to have. There Ron Funches lo- did not. Why would Ron Funches not show up? Do you have a theory on that, Howard or I, Mike? Actually, I'll let Mike go first. Out of um, respect. I don't. Maybe he thought it was a. Uh, fake maybe i don't know is, okay is there, is there other people that confirmed didn't show up uh glenn gilberti disco inferno had <laughs> problems with his passport yeah and then had then which which was ironic because then he tweeted later like about like uh some people not being allowed to vote and it's like how hard is it to get your id and some other paperwork in order from the guy <laughs> who was not able to <laughs> find his passport and go on the jericho cruise uh constant i mean I mean, I don't even want to really go into a thing here, like, but Glenn Gilberti is just, like, this contrarian nonstop. Like, it's not even worth paying attention to, but it is kind of obnoxious. Like, worse than Rappaport, really. At least Rappaport <laughs> stands by his convictions. So, I, he has I that will say, the, that reminded me, the one New York guy I've, I've never been able to get into is John Leguizamo. <laughs> oh, you have <laughs> pissed me off, Royal. <laughs> Johnny Legs is without a doubt. And this is a shoot. This is not Howard Schmidrick, but Howard Schulman talking to you. Elevates any movie to such an extent that I have seen One for the Money with Katherine Heigl several times. One for the Money, Spawn, Kick Ass 2. Kick Ass 2. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> All of yeah. them. I've seen so, all of them. The as a New York guy, you must have really it. appreciate uh, Super Mario Brothers, the film. Oh, that, that's a Bob good Hoskins is a great New York guy. <laughs> I like yeah. Gamer with John Leguizamo. He's, he has a short part oh. on that. But... Also good. Which one was Gamer? That was the uh, the guy after Crank 2. It was the guy's <laughs> Oh, yeah, two. I know Crank 2. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wow. And they made a movie I called Gamer. Gamer. It's pretty good. You know, jo- John Leguizamo is pro- probably too famous to be on this cruise just by, like, a <laughs> little bit. Yeah. You know, <laughs> he's definitely he, – he, he, he passed the cutting off point. I think that's how you know if you're, like – past the D-list if Chris Jericho invited you. He talked about first planning this cruise, and he's like, I needed a band and I needed a reliable band, and like, he kept mentioning how Papa Roach was so expensive on his podcast, like, you wouldn't believe what Papa Roach charges. Like, you wouldn't, wouldn't believe what they charge. Like, he kept, he mentioned him like five different times in the span of five minutes. He's like, you know, so I, I couldn't rely on a Papa Roach, so you know what? I went with Fozzie, I went with myself, because I know I'm not going to cheat the fans out of a good show. It had nothing to do with the money. So... <laughs> There is no way Papa Roach is expensive to book. There is no fucking way. (laughs) Well, they were too expensive for the Jericho crew. Do you think he played as a way to pay himself extra money, (laughs) just like how Trump only vacations at Mar-a-Lago? 
Oh, well, maybe. Maybe you got a little cut of the action there. A from, little uh, kickback. Yeah, I, I don't know who from Norwegian. Uh, it was I think some marketing team was handling that. I I don't know. We but gotta the, find out the truth about. We this gotta one. we gotta dig a little deeper. But first things first, we go back to when it started. I'm the it was realist. Announced, it was announced with Ring of Honor and all that, and it really didn't seem like much. It really, I I was worried, and I'm I'm sure sales were low at at one point, and then came the infamous tweet, <laughs> the the infamous tweet that said. 35% of the Cavins books so far have been by women between the ages of 18 to 49. That's <laughs> a lot of bikinis. That is a lot of bikinis. And it this turns is out one of the most controversial things ever stated by a human being. I yes, and turns out that wasn't that many bikinis after all. We never got an update for starters. It was just 35% at some point in time. We don't know how much that number dropped. Well, and he says the cabins were booked by these women. He mm -hmm. never stated that women intended to stay in the cabins. <laughs> That's true. So thirty-five percent of the guys' mom people's moms were booking it for them. <laughs> so thirty-five percent of Bullet Club fans' moms paid for their cabins is but, the main. But they're between the ages of eighteen and forty-nine. Well, you know? a lot of Bullet Club fans are probably about what they're in their early twenties or so. Something they're like super that. kicking it with Kelsey and all that. <laughs> so they're that young, they, they don't have their own money, and their moms are all going to be about 43 because they had their kids young. Got you, got you. You cracked the code, Howard. You cracked the code. I'm just doing the math. All right, well, anyways, regardless of this being a bait-and-switch type scenario. Oh, and there was some baiting. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of baiting in there because, you know what, any woman... I, I went through that uh, hashtag, and every woman there was practically spoken for. And you know what? I saw a couple of one pieces. Are you going to tell me that that counts as a bikini, Howard? It depends on the one piece. Okay. If it, it it's was a typical one cover. piece, but only on the bottom, I'll <laughs> call it a bikini. <laughs> oh, good grief. I mean, the, the Borat swimsuit's only one piece. That's, That's true. Right. <laughs> that is, yeah, that, that is a well, good one piece. Then I'm going to have to go ahead and give this another point for Chris Jericho. Okay, so we raised the bikini percentage now. We have. I, I want to say explained the math. I want to say it was initially at 5%. I don't know if that's okay with you guys, but after the one piece... Whoa, are the coppers near you guys right now? I mean, uh, is they're outside? Yeah, they're, they're out here. They're coming for me. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You were, friend, are you, were you a friend of the guy with the van, Howard, who was uh, recently arrested? Yeah, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good man, good man. Of course, I'm very familiar with him, and I was a big fan of his work, and in a lot of ways, I bear some responsibility, because I told <laughs> you him that he should mail bombs to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> No, you do not. You do not. You don't even know him. You, know, you, didn't, you definitely didn't help him uh, put decals on his van either. His name's Fakos or something like that. <laughs> he was, what was his uh, uh, Twitter handle again? You got, it was like Hard oh, Rock something? It was Hard Rock 85 or something like that. Yeah. Oh, you think the guy was just a fan of like the Hard Rock Cafe? He's a, he's a good, no, he was, he was their like, music promoter. <laughs> you booked a show for the Hard Rock Cafe in Dade County. Good grief. That is that Good is so man. Close. He also wanted oh. to be a pro wrestler. <laughs> Was that true? Yeah. What and the he hell? also managed a uh, traveling male model review. <laughs> he was you a very a interesting guy. guy. Yeah, well, <laughs> I know him. I told you. So, so Mike, was there any point during the Jericho cruise, did you think that you and Al could do maybe not an investigative series, but like, you know, were you at all tempted as a fan? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. I won't lie. I'm gonna say at some point when I saw between five people, it could be split down to two hundred and twenty dollars each. I was slightly tempted, but you weren't interested at all. See, well, here's the thing. I've never been on a cruise before. Have you guys ever been on a cruise? No, never. Oh, okay. I have. <laughs> the, course. Duck, the duck boat. The no, duck boat no. Count. Uh, when I was, uh, before uh, Franklin's grandmother purchased me, I was... <laughs> 
taken care of by some other people, and they took me on a cruise through the Panama Canal. Oh, wow. <laughs> and wow. It, you go down through Florida and come up in San Diego, and in the middle you get to see somebody get stung by a stingray. <laughs> Lord. Hope was a fever. <laughs> they had a heart attack and had to go away on an emergency boat. Jesus, Howard is really sad and dark, man. Well, it was okay. I think they were okay. <laughs> So okay, that's ba- good. Ba- basically, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I've never been on a cruise, and in my mind, it looks it doesn't look very fun. It, like it, I just imagine it's like a lot of big, dark, empty rooms, and uh-huh. not a lot of cool, and just being stuck with people. But you know, I saw I saw photos of this cruise cruise ship, and it was huge. It was like a fucking giant, it was massive, it was like, yeah, yeah. So I'm. It's not like I would sign up for the next one or anything. But of course, of course. <laughs> if I knew a cruise ship was that huge. It would have been, uh, you know, a little more tempting, but I, I doubt it. I, I, everybody you would talk to would suck. So there's yeah, there's, <laughs> everybody, yeah. everybody no. you would speak to would be terrible. Not if terrible. Papa Roach was there, then yeah, there'd be at least Papa four Roach. cool guys to talk to. Uh. <laughs> you True. know what? At least Papa Roach's fan base might be a little less obnoxious than wrestling uh. fans. At least, no, at least you may have gotten some Pop Roach fans. I'm not going to co-sign that one. <laughs> You're not going to co-sign that? Mike, no. can I get a co-sign? I don't, I don't know, man. It's Papa fun. Roach fans or pro wrestling fans? I'll, I think, take, I think, I'll take pro wrestling fans. Yeah, okay. I, think, I think people who are fans of forgotten bands and still like diehard fans are real big weirdos probably more i feel attacked right now i feel attacked (laughs) i feel attacked the man who tried to get him smash mouth in the city in you're you're, you're throwing shots at me here mike gosh what's the problem it's a different thing for sure at least ironic what don't tell me my fandom's (laughs) ironic for them the hell you think no i like them i legitimately like them that was fucked up, Mike. Apologize. Jesus Christ, man. You're firing both barrels at me here, man. Easy. I like, sorry, I, I, I like Sugar Ray, too. I, I mean, I think you're proving your point right now why it would be better to be with wrestling fans. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you know, if you guys need me, I'll be in my email inbox, okay? <laughs> Jesus, Harold Christ, man. You got any more for me here? Is this the roast of Franklin? <laughs> you got you got any more? Uh, I'm, I'm, done. I'm done. You're done. Really? He's the guy who lives with his uncle. Okay, you can't even think of anything else. Doesn't say much for you there, pal. Doesn't say much for you. Christ. All right. Back to my point here of the Jericho <laughs> Cruise. I was trying to present a timeline before being personally attacked for my convictions. You know. It's really unfair. Anyways, I was, but, but and similar to Mike, I thought this is gonna this could be like a rinky dinky thing. Like with the affiliation of wrestling, I thought like, what if they cut corners and it's like a real shithole of a cruise? Like I yeah. never really thought it'd be Norwegian related, you know? So yeah, so I I mean, granted, anywhere you go, is this gonna be wrestling fans everywhere doing karaoke or at the buffet? Uh, but what really got me was the DDP yoga that they have for everybody. And I think there was mandatory, from what I understand. They knock on your door and just uh, send you out of there. Uh, but what I found was, I guess, would really epitomize this. And maybe wait, this, wait, this, wait, 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 yeah. wait. Can we – they woke you up and forced you to go do yoga. With DDP, Diamond Dallas Page from WCW and uh, Ready to Rumble. Well, hmm. How do you feel about this, Howard? I've got to be honest with everyone out there about Diamond Dallas Page. I think the guy's a weird creep, and I don't trust him. <laughs> no. So for those that don't know, Diamond Dallas Page, former wrestler. Uh, lucky like, you. Yeah, <laughs> right. Lucky you. Uh, ready to rumble uh, alumni. Um, and now he does yoga. Like, he just, like. And he literally, he stole our He does our yoga line. for regular guys. <laughs> yeah. He says, it, it ain't your mama's yoga. Doesn't that sound familiar? A lot <laughs> like ours. Yeah. yeah. A lot like what our slogan, it ain't your nana's podcast. So, so whatever. Uh, DDP does his mandatory yoga. But, what, you know, my, uh, so along with the bikini point, another issue I have is 
they present it like you are going to mingle with the wrestlers on this cruise and there's going to be out and about with regular people hanging out at the buffet or getting a drink, man, or down the slide of a pool. But it turns <laughs> out there's a – first off, they have closed quarters. Like when they pe- when they loaded everybody well, – loaded. When everybody was checking in, like there were so many photos of like Kenny Omega and like Adam Page going in and like, yeah, look, I'm right with Kenny Omega. Like <laughs> – that is the last time you're ever going to be that close to them on this entire cruise before they were just, you know, sequestered off into their private quarters, you know? Do you think they originally planned to hang out with the fans, <laughs> but that was just initial, like, 15 minutes with them was so awful that they called an audible to never again be among them? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, uh... Mike, did you by chance think, like, the wrestlers would kind of be – you thought, like, maybe you'd see JR at a salad bar or something <laughs> sitting down? Like, or did you know? Did you have the impression? Because I, I initially thought they, there's no way to separate us. It's just a boat. <laughs> How big could a boat be? Turns out pretty big. But Yeah. No, yeah. Um, that was the one thing where I was like, there, you got to be such a goober to even believe this. Like maybe the Ken? Mo- <laughs> you're attacking me. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> what kind I'm of sorry. you're calling me a goober? Wait, he's gotta be a goober to believe this, man. Of course they're not gonna be hanging out with this filth. There, there's no way they would do that. That would that wouldn't like normalize them to them, and they would, then they wouldn't be big stars anymore, and there would be no. Second My thing group. is, like, I think if Kenny Omega hadn't been one of the wrestlers, they probably would have interacted with everybody. I Kenny think, Omega yeah. has to be such a weird creep that they have to keep him <laughs> hidden away from everybody else. Um, and then to explain guys, yeah. that away, they have to hide all the other wrestlers away, too. Well, you guys insulted Kenny Omega on your recent episode. Didn't you call me? It was either you or Al. I think it was Al. A Funko Pop completionist? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was the that line? Was Al. Uh, yeah. That was Al. Okay, yeah. well. <laughs> I find that generous Kenny Omega. <laughs> that is very generous for a man like what is the over and under that Kenny Omega <laughs> doesn't watch hentai? Like would oh, you come on. you would not bet on that, right? No, d- definitely not. <laughs> so there's no chance. Man, like man. even like on on a on a weekly basis, you think he goes a week <laughs> without watching hentai. Hell of a wrestler, but he's <laughs> definitely he's a, great... a weirdo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, friend regardless, of the show. I thought the friend of the show, Kenny Omega. Uh, I thought they would be around because one thing, like, as you know, as nice as their private quarters might be, at the end of the day, Jim Ross hears that voice. There's a buffet there, Jim. <laughs> There's a buffet there calling you. You know, none of this uppity food these people are eating here. You eat like you're back then in Oklahoma. That buffet had to have been calling Jim Ross. They're you know? bringing the and buffet you could tolerate to Jim some... Ross. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel the the idea of a buffet for Jim Ross and a bar for the wrestlers. I mean, at some point, you got to get cabin fever. So, okay. But I was obviously wrong. The wrestlers were closed off in their quarters, and they had their wrestling and their comedy stuff. I can imagine, like, the real sad wrestlers may lapse around to like get noticed like you know i don't want to say like shane helms or anything is a sad case <laughs> or anything like that but like the photos of like the candidates are like colt cabana and shane helms and james ellsworth like what does that tell you <laughs> like come on i feel i mean who else do you think would probably made the rounds just for like a confidence boost mike do you have any do you, do you think like Rhett titus maybe like walked around I, I think there's a lot of roh guys who are just like us deep down they're just like us yeah I, you know, regular I think I think I think you guys are right that if uh, Kenny Omega wasn't there, then maybe it would have been a little more personable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the chance. Not, not Jericho be. though; he would have stayed on. No, 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 no. Sure. I feel like Jericho would have been. In, I mean, even before I thought like Jericho's going to be an enclosed ki- glass case box, you know, <laughs> like greeting everybody uh, uh, coming on board, but like you know, super protected, you know, in this like Pope bulletproof you know place here you know jericho so. doesn't owe anybody anything no he doesn't but the first thing that happens hours into the cruise is the concert and i thought okay he's gonna get helicoptered off then that's it i think he's done right <laughs> <laughs> he had his match and all that so like and he had like another concert of fozzy they had to go to like i don't know i mean mandatory fozzy concerts has got yeah. to be rough you know I mean, that's why he wanted Papa Roach, though. I know, can't blame him. He tried to give the people a break. <laughs> he did. So, so back to the most, the focal point in all of this is what we're here for. 
the bikinis. <laughs> the bikinis. And we all saw that photo of Jim Ross and Jerry Lawler with their shots. Again, Jerry Lawler definitely took a lap around, I feel. And not oh, to yeah. get praise, but like, yeah. Yeah. you know, to scout for talent, put it yeah. in that light. Like, he def- and he must have been very disappointed. <laughs> the first thing he had to do is like, I'm not getting out of my fucking cabin. Are you serious? <laughs> like, I-, I feel Jerry Lawler might be, if there's a class action lawsuit, Jerry Lawler could be an ally to those who wanted the more bikinis. He would he'd say, like, hey, you know what? They're on to something. Let's there, get there wasn't touch anything with this there. <laughs> Jerry Lawler might say, you know, the 16 to 18 uh, ratio of bikinis, you know, is damn near abysmal. So he might not, yeah, he might not care for that. So what I also wanted to elaborate on, and Uncle Howard, you have, uh, you have experience getting banned from private areas, was the private deck. Mm. Where there were actual bikinis, where the, you could even say it was like fifty percent bikinis, you know, and That's nobody right. was allowed up there except the you know the the boys in the back and the girls. How do you guys feel about this? Well, I feel that it's nice for uh, them to have a safe space when <laughs> they do have easily the creepiest fan base that has ever <laughs> been on a boat together until the Papa Roach cruise gets assembled. <laughs> Fuck you. So. <laughs> I stand by my convictions. I'm, I mean, not that I'm even a Papa Roach fan, but jeez, man. Oh, I like... truly apologize for cutting your life into. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was wanted to reference another Papa Roach song because that one seems there wasn't so overdone, another one, uh... but there aren't any others. Dead Cell. What? Dead Cell? Is that a song? No. Remember <laughs> remember when their singer was on stage at some MTV Awards thing and then pills fell out of his pocket? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't Eminem mock him like a little afterwards and do the same thing? I think just the same thing happened. I don't think it was a mockery. <laughs> I think it was just two fucking drug addicts. Jesus um, Christ. Jesus. Eminem's doing great and uh, who cares about the other guy? So <laughs> happy ending. Happy so, ending. Happy ending. Christ. <laughs> Easy there, Howard. Easy there. Oh, I've got a happy ending. No, right. no, no, no. So anyways, the Jericho Cruise, you know, it, 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 what, what entices me, not entices me, uh, after I went on my little crusade, so to say, uh, and trying to find out the bikini percentage, which, okay, he said it would be 35%. Can we agree on a number and say it was maybe 7%? Are you guys fine with that? I will I will keep the three and the five that he put in and say it was three to five percent. <laughs> okay. Mike, do I'll, you have an idea on the percentage of bikinis that were on board? Not counting have, the talent. <laughs> I have a conspiracy theory because there, oh. there was no Ooh. photos allowed after day two. Or after something day? Like that. Right? Or, yeah, or something like that. So maybe it was all bikinis. We don't know. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm leaving right now. I am. I am so tired of getting shit on and insulted here. It was all bikinis. Yeah, everybody was, was just in bikinis. Fuck, no, man. <laughs> Bullshit. No, I refuse to believe that. I mean, I refuse to believe that just for the sake of that. I can't that even like wrap does my head around make it. a lot of sense. To Shut the fuck up. Even if, if it wasn't all bikinis, they might have been doing some dirty, dirty things. <laughs> and Jericho knew it was going to happen, so he's like, "No, no more cameras." How is? <laughs> oh, that's true. All right, ladies, bikinis <laughs> out, cameras off. I mean, get yep. the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I can't even. No, my God. I mean, not that I would have any like c- cruise remorse of not getting on there, you know. But fuck no. What man. if it was one hundred percent bikinis? One hundred percent. It was all just wi- women and Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega. <laughs> God, well they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. So. <laughs> no, that's stupid. I, I did order the pay per view, which I think drops yeah. tomorrow or Saturday. So yeah. Oh, <laughs> so man. I'll find out. It might be all bikinis, and I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be one lucky Shit. guy. If you can, all right. I want to issue not a challenge here. But if Mike can screenshot in the pay-per-view one bikini <laughs> and tweet us with a screenshot of one, one not even a woman, one, any, one man, whatever, <laughs> in a bikini, 
I will Venmo him $5. <laughs> there we does go. Does it have to... It, does it not count, though, if it's, like, one of the wrestler ladies? No, yeah. no, no. That does not count. Because the okay. private deck where Brandy Rhodes was on and, like, Flip Gordon's girlfriend, I feel that was an insult to the people. Now, that was, like, classist, you it know? Was. I mean, give me a break. Could you I mean, look at them from afar, like sometimes when you're at the beach and they've got the uh, little telescope set up where you so, can look at the birds? So oddly enough, uh, I spoke of a man earlier, and I'm going to be playing this after uh, we're done, uh, who did go on the Jericho cruise, allegedly, and he brought his binoculars to Birdwatch, and <laughs> I guess... Later, he watched he, a bird or two. He watched some fit all. birds, actually. He decided. Some right fit birds. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Uncle Howard. British Uncle Howard. That should never exist. <laughs> British uh, Uncle Howard is a, a friend of mine who may one day appear on the show. <laughs> no, God, no. God save the Queen there. Uh, so, this gentleman, Stuart, brought his binoculars to Birdwatch, was upset of the lack of bikinis, and. I guess he could see the private deck and said, I need to get my money's worth, my visual money's worth, my bang for my buck. Oh, no pun and his bucks for his bang. Yeah, so he, so he, he claims he claimed to have, uh, you know, just taken a few peeks up there. And I don't, you know what, I don't normally condone that kind of stuff or drones, you know, drones for like perverted behavior. But in that case, I don't blame him. Because unlike Mike, I, I think this is uh, I think we're at seven percent bikinis. I think. <laughs> Do you have a bikini percentage, Mike? I mean, the uh, one that's not completely insulting to me. Oh, okay. If I'm being realistic. If you're being realistic, do the numbers. I think I would I would be with Howard and say three to five percent. Three to five percent. So I'm the one being generous here. The yeah, seven yeah. percent. Well, you've always been known as a great philanthropist. <laughs> that's true. That is true. So okay. So we had the bikini percentage. I guess, I guess we'll all agree then. Five percent bikinis on board. Big drop from the thirty-five percent Jericho promise. And I think a class action lawsuit is in order for those people. <laughs> I, you know, I highly implore them to take legal action because Jericho never even removed that tweet. That's what I found odd. Like he stood his ground, man. He was <laughs> George Zimmerman here. <laughs> Those fine passengers for Trey Fondo. No. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. That was horrible. No, I, I like apologize. it. That's it. That's I apologize. In That's keeping bad. with the theme of this episode. No, that was terrible. I don't yeah, mean that. we we could George God. Zimmerman, enemy of the show. George Zimmerman can go fuck himself, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, George, fuck this George ain't Zimmerman. George Zimmerman's podcast. This ain't for George. Oh, fucking Christ. I'm gonna get in trouble, you guys. Ugh. <laughs> Not good. Uh, that was Not terrible. Good. I hope no one ever Googles me after this. That was, <laughs> that was horrible. Shut up, man. It was my... It was, you first, and Howard combined. You're friends with the worst people. George Zimmerman and the, I, the van guy. The van guy, George Zimmerman. No, I never met George Zimmerman. That guy. <laughs> He's Florida strong, too, though. He is Florida strong. He is. He survived Irma just the same as all of us. Yeah. <laughs> Boston Strong, yeah, that's all great. That's all cute, uh, Wahlbergs. We got Florida Strong. We have Uncle Howard. We got Hard Rock 85 <laughs> and George Zimmerman, who I don't like, by the way. Hate that no, guy. We don't like him, but everyone <laughs> else that. is good. You know who I act? You know I like? I like Barack Obama. That's <laughs> that's my kind of guy right there. You know, love him. Big. I, I love. Not I don't. Not race. So, okay, we're back in agreement. 5% for the bikinis. I was just suggesting that potentially if the Jericho Cruise attendees felt slighted in any way that they should take legal action, and maybe some will. I don't know. And I'm, You know what? I'm sure Jerry Lawler will be an advocate for them. I'm sure they have that. You know, a, a private deck. You know, I even heard the buffet was at a limit. You couldn't eat everything you wanted no, there. That's bullshit. No, that's ridiculous. Come on. No, that's what I'm hearing. I mean, you... You put a buffet in front of thousands of wrestling fans? Come on. Were there thousands? There How many thousands were there? there? Mike, would you say there's like, like a good uh, 2,000? Yeah, I think that's what, what, what it was supposed to be. 2,000, I yeah. think they said. Yeah. And they claimed they sold out. Yeah. That's Man. like a largest city in Nebraska sized place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically. It's yeah, like a small city on board. Christ. That's Madison on the sea. So they had like. Pat Patterson do karaoke as well. Do you oh, think Pat? God. <laughs> what? 
Oh, that guy owes me some money. <laughs> oh, he owes you some money. <laughs> okay. I'm glad we didn't attack anybody's sexual orientation here because you and Pat are pretty much... Pretty We're much pretty same. much same yeah. sexual orientation, me and him. You just like hunks and babes. Well, hunks, well, babes, like hunks, and whatever. anything in between. That is... That's something. So, is there anything else you guys would like to add as far as the cruise? I, I think... Uh, was it a success? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Are they going to do another one? What do you guys think? I've always heard the measure of success of a cruise is by how many people got their dick sucked. <laughs> and when you look at it under that light, I have to say, bikinis or no, this cruise was probably a success in a lot of ways. Oh, my God. Mike, do you think... Off the bat now, learning a little bit more about the cruise and the end result. Is this is there going to be a Jericho Cruise too? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Um, and you're going to be part of it with me. I'm going to be part of it. I'm going <laughs> to get get the biggest the biggest fucking cruise cabin they have. Uh, so you're I gonna assume be the bigger... with Kobe from Papa Roach. <laughs> yes. You and him just going be... down. <laughs> me and Papa Roach, we're going to be in there. That I assume the great. bigger, the bigger, more expensive cabins have to be closer to that private deck. So. Oh, oh that's true. Yeah. Maybe, and maybe. Maybe can you can pay for access to brand new rooms. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Uncle Howard, you wanted to do a panty raid on the Jericho cruise. Is that it? Yeah, that is right. I want to do a panty raid, and as you know, I am pansexual, and pan is part of panties, so it's always <laughs> got to come into it. No, I don't just want to do a panty raid on Brandy Rhodes and Flip Gordon's girlfriend. I want to do a panty raid on the other 3 to 5% of women that are there. <laughs> what about the hunks? And I also want to do it on the hunks, of course, but it's no fun to panty raid on a hunk, because most hunks give you their panties freely and willingly. It is true, you know. Uh, the, the chase is better than the catch. The chase is better than... So you are proposing an Ocean's Eleven-style panty raid on the second Jericho cruise. Is this is this a, a threat, Uncle I'm, Howard? I'm putting a team together. So you're George Clooney. I'm and, George uh, Clooney. You're George Clooney, and uh, Chris Jericho's Andy Garcia. He's not George Zimmerman anymore. No. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully. George, George Zimmerman is not allowed on the cruise because he is an George. enemy of the show. He is an enemy of the show. <laughs> and so in you're fact, putting together a team. I am putting So together would that a make team. Mike your Bernie Mac for this uh, Oceans? Uh, <laughs> it's a literal Oceans, too, well, mind you. Mike, Jericho now, 13. Mike, if there's anything I know about you, it's that you're small and agile. Yes. You're going to be my Jet Li. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you can okay. fit into small places and you don't get much dialogue. Yeah. Oh, God. Sounds great. Sounds great. Sounds great. So you're assembling a team. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, if you want to be uh, a part of Uncle Howard's uh, Ocean's Eleven. Just Too bad. Uh, you're not invited. I was going to say, I, I was going to propose a hashtag. Oh, okay. So sure. Fan yeah, no. Fan. I forgot so, so, <laughs> about those guys. So Ocean. So. Howard Oceans. What kind of hashtag can we have for this? It'll be Howard's Eleven. Howard's Eleven. Hashtag Howard's Eleven, and same Howard's race. End. That was a movie. I don't. I never saw that. I mean, no one did. Mike, have you seen Howard's End? I think I had the VHS tape. I've yeah. seen. I've never watched it. It was Howard definitely a movie Parks. that existed in <laughs> yeah. VHS times. <laughs> didn't Oceans? Didn't those movies start at eight? Am I imagining that? Eight? No, the <laughs> yeah, new no, one's Oceans true. Eight. They went back. The eight is all women. But but the first Oceans movie was Oceans like with eight, Sinatra right? and all that. I don't know, like the one with Brad Pitt. That was Oceans. That 11. was Oceans Eleven. So they just they remade it and added three people. What's up? Yeah, the, from just, the Frank Sinatra they one. They just put three more in. No, I think that one was Ocean's Eleven as well. And the new one's Ocean's Eight. So, the, the new one's only... Ocean's Eight. Because so they can't find more than eight talented this, these movies. Actors. These movies take place in a universe where numbers don't go in the same order that they do in ours. <laughs> no. No, we, go, makes... we go Ocean's Eleven, then we have Ocean's Eleven, then Ocean's Twelve, then Ocean's Thirteen, now we're at Ocean's Eight. What's coming next? Ocean's Four? <laughs> Ocean's Ten Billion? I don't know anymore. Oh, wow. That's, that's why I only saw the, the first remake, because... <laughs> 
I, you know, that's the smallest number. It's not impressive if they do a heist with one more person added. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> yes, it's it more is. Impressive. No. It's more impressive <laughs> yes. when there's less people doing no. heists. The well. second one had Bruce Willis as himself. <laughs> and it had it had Julia Roberts at playing herself. You know, her, her character. No, 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 no. She was playing a character named Tess. And they had to sneak Tess into Roberts. a building. <laughs> she had to sneak into a building. And they kept saying, well, you kind of look like her. So... The character Tess had to pretend to be Julia Roberts. And <laughs> no. And she met Bruce Willis, you know, Bruce Willis playing Bruce Willis, meeting Tess, acting like Julia Roberts. And it is the most confusing moment in cinema history. You guys don't know about this? No, I have actually never seen any of these movies. <laughs> oh, my God. You did a cherry bottom spanking. <laughs> I had to Google who Elliot Gould was when he talked about him last time because I drop you. heard no idea. He was Ross's dad on Friends. Oh, I'm going to drop you so bad tonight. I'm going to drop you. There's only one thing that you're going to be dropping, and that's your panties when I'm giving you a spanking of your own. The cherry red, my ass. Cherry red and your ass. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm a New York guy. Forget (laughs) about it. He's trying to make you feel at home, Mike. Do you feel at home? It's working. It's working. It's I'm working, glad yeah. you find this. We just comedy. need to get. We need to get a few bagels in this bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right. in the freaking water. Christ, <laughs> good God. Okay, so if you want to be part of Howard's Ocean's Eleven, just Howard's hashtag Ends. Howard's Eleven and name your skills. Are you a Scott Con? Are you cool? And you know, are, tell are me, you are, are, what's your alignment back? too? Are you chaotic evil or whatever? Yeah. Lawful good, all that. All uh, that. So. Mike, do you want to plug anything? We still have to interview Jumpin' Jim Grabowski. He's okay. coming right up. We didn't want you guys in the same uh, room for. Uh, we know <laughs> you guys have beef. There's yeah, some heat there. So I am, you know, I'm part of like the wrestling journalism industry, and he's yeah, part of true. the wrestling industry. So we're kind of common enemies. So There's that sense. divide. It's, it's like yeah. Trump in the New York Times. It's just like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do a podcast called Virtual Pros. You can check out. Uh, just search Virtual Pros. We're also on Spotify, amongst all the other streaming things and um it's uh, vrtl pros on twitter and instagram and i also do a couple other podcasts one's called border boss it's all about taco bell oh and, shit uh, oh, oh, nice. why haven't i listened you're gonna have to, to hook it up one. with a link for that later but yeah <laughs> that sounds and, uh, good and then uh all holes filled where uh, <laughs> it's, 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 Howard's, <laughs> you got howard's attention you got howard's <laughs> attention immediately <laughs> That's uh, the the off weeks of Border Boss. We do a podcast called All Holes Filled, where we talk about old old records we never listened to. It's some some nerd stuff. But oh. I did have I did have one request before I leave. Oh, go ahead. I I would like to hear some uh, some Doctor Evil. <laughs> All right, let me let me get him out of here. Oh, let me get him here. He, his feelings have been awful hurt lately, but I think we can give him a call. I'll get him. I'll get him. So uh, I'm there. there. Oh there. my God. There, Mike. <laughs> Stop hey, the evil. Up, you do the wrestling. Oh, don't pin me, dude. Don't pin me to the mat. No, get my shoulder up. No. Collar elbow. No. Mike. Mike. Are you fine? Are you fond of hot liquid magma? I, I am, Dr. Evil. I am. I have a whole layer of a protective ocean moat of hot liquid magma so nobody can cross. You want to cross? Good I luck. do. You can't cross. Nope. Hey, Mike. Yep. Zip it. <laughs> Zip it. Oh, man. Zip it. <laughs> All right, Dr. Evil. Get, okay. <laughs> get the hell out of here. Jesus Christ. Always bragging about his lair. Get over yourself, man. Get over yourself, man. <sighs> All right. Mike, seriously, yep. it's been a pleasure, man. Thank you, you were so great. much. Everyone, we're big listen you know, to Virtual Pros. It's legitimately listen to virtual good. Pros. Not like this. It's one. the only decent wrestling podcast. <laughs> it's, it's, the, the, it's the only one I could ever imagine anyone with a girlfriend <laughs> or boyfriend listening to. Christ. And they make t shirts that won't make you look like someone who deserves to. I don't even know. I was <laughs> to I, bourdain himself? I just started thinking, yeah, sure. Okay. Jesus no. Christ. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. Bourdain and Zimmerman today for me. I'm going to roll. No, but yes, Jesus though, I, I will vouch for the virtual Andrew pros. Andrew Zimmer and Kill Trayvon. The virtual pros wrestling shirts. If you are a wrestling fan and you're just like, damn, 
I can't rock a wrestling shirt for my life because then you know it's gonna stray away all the all the clunge. Well, you know, <laughs> keep tabs on Virtual Pros on Facebook and Twitter. And no I Facebook, just Twitter and Instagram. Okay, my bad, my bad. <laughs> I thought you had a page. Well, we got a Facebook page. No big deal. <laughs> Twenty likes, double digits. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, follow them on Twitter, VRTL Pros, and they do a Ryback. A uh, recap, which is yeah. one of my favorite things. A uh, recap of pro wrestler Ryback. So, and uh, podcast. So wait, wait. Uh, before before you go, before you go, you know Uncle Howard and Ryback share one similar view. What's that? They both think that Naughty America, the old Naughty America videos, were real. <laughs> That's right, they were. <laughs> they weren't. They were not real. Dude. They had to be. Those, how could they? I, 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 I'm kind. Of, I kind of side with them, man. They're yeah. Like they, if they weren't real, why would they be like, "Hey, who are you? What are you doing?" <laughs> That's true. That has got a point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're my. Oh, you're Billy's uh, friend from high school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And Fair once enough. they got, once they found out, they're like, "This works, man. People are liking these." That's when they started plugging in the actors. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Christ. Well, on that note, Mike. Thank you so much for, for sure. talking Jericho Cruz. I hope we didn't bring down your cloud today, my man. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> okay. Anytime you guys need me, I'll, I'll be here. I'll come to the bed. Anytime. We do need yeah. you. And let let your little Fernal know that when he uh, gets the balls to appear on this show, <laughs> Christ. he's still not allowed to. <laughs> oh, he's allowed. Howard, out. Oh, God. One. One, two. Check me out right here, yo. Yo, the sun don't shine forever, but as long as it's here, then we might as well shine together. Better head. now than never, business right before pleasure. P. Diddy and the fam, who you know do it better. Yeah, right, no matter what, be air tight. Yeah. So when you hear something, make sure you hear it right. Don't make an yeah. ass out of yourself not by assuming our music keeps you moving. What are you choosing? You know that yeah. I'm two levels above you, baby. Hug me, baby. I'ma make you love me, baby. Talking crazy ain't gonna get you nothing but choke. And that jealousy is. It's only gonna leave you broke So the only thing left now is God for these cats And babe, you know you too hard for these cats I'm a wing cause I'm too smart for these cats While they making up facts, uh, you making up plaques In the commission, you ask for permission to hit him He don't like me, him and wild wife, he was with him You heard of us, the murderous, most shady Been on the low lately, the feds hate me The sun is f***ing, they say my killing's too blatant You hesitate me, I'm in your mama crib waiting Not taping, your fam the following conversation was recorded earlier today. It's with me and a young man who claims he was on the Jericho cruise. Of course, we here at Pillow Talk have no way of confirming whether the following allegations are true or not. So keep in mind, these are just allegations of what took place on the Jericho cruise. We're not sure if they're founded in any sort of truth, and we are not saying that they are facts whatsoever so we don't know if he's telling the truth we maybe maybe not i don't know it's all alleged hey everybody this is franklin lombardo and i'm here with a young man who was on the jericho cruise they just docked recently and uh i don't mean the kind of docking that shows up in uncle howard's bing searches i mean real docking uh, right up on board here i'm here with a young man named Stuart. is it uh it that's the given name. I go by Stu as well. Okay, Stu. Okay, I mean, what can I call you here? Uh, you could go with Stu or uh, Stewie. Okay, Stu. Stewie. Okay. Either one. Like the Family Man character. Uh, uh yes. Uh, also <laughs> like the the character from Mrs. Doubtfire. Uh, <laughs> Who was that in Mrs. Doubtfire? Yeah, Pierce Brosnan. Oh, okay. Yes, a drive by fruity. How I, I, I was actually named after Pierce Brosnan in that movie. So. <laughs> wow. Do, do you look anything? We're just speaking on the phone here. So, for people who don't know, do you look anything like Pierce Brosnan for the ladies? Say so you do. Yes. Yes. <laughs> there you go. That's all the confirmation they need. So, I'm here with Stu. You are on the Jericho cruise. And is it safe to say that you were on this cruise once you saw the tweet about there being. A 35% chance of seeing bikinis from the ages of 18 to 49? Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, Franklin. Um, you know, I, I go to a lot of wrestling events. Uh, cool. I'm a pretty serious wrestling fan. And uh, that's one of the problems is that 
when you spend all your free time at wrestling shows, it's it's kind of hard to meet chicks. So uh, you and I, we're both you know we're both ladies men, and absolutely, and I can tell you the, the idea that I can get to watch wrestling uh, with with all my favorite friends, and then and then see some hot babes too. Well, well, gee whiz, that's just a, a win win for you. Exactly. Well, you thought it'd be a, a win win because this dream boat. Turned out to be sounds like a little bit of a nightmare. Cause how many bikinis did you see this whole time there? Well, uh, I think I saw a couple of bikinis on Twitter, but okay. I didn't actually see any of them myself. That's uh, <laughs> wow, quite disappointing. Wow, that is disappointing. I heard there was a private deck for the ladies who were paid to be there. Were you were you allowed access or no? Well, I mean, I I tried to sneak in a couple times. Uh, oh, I no. had a. I brought some some different costumes, some uh, you know, oh, no. the like the the Macho Man and Hulk Hogan costumes and things <laughs> I don't like think that. Hulk Hogan's gonna go over quite well, but yeah, all right. yeah, definitely didn't. Uh, you know, I I thought I could get in there dressed as a wrestler, but uh, uh it's that Pierce Brosnan look kind of gave me away. <laughs> gave it away know? for you, huh? Yeah. Wow. Uh, so, I, I didn't want to out you here, but you mentioned to me off when we were speaking earlier that you brought binoculars. Just to get a glimpse of some of the ladies that were in the private deck. Well, I, I actually brought the binoculars because I was hoping to to fill in my bird watching uh, journal. I've got okay, some rare species. You know, yeah, I mean, nothing perverted about bringing binoculars to look at Absolutely birds. Absolutely not. Lots of no. normal guys use binoculars for things other than looking at chicks. Absolutely. I think I think everyone could agree with that. But but yeah, once they kind of force my hand. They, for, uh, yeah. they forced their hand here. You know, Pretty much. You, they forced your hand. You just brought them to Birdwatch, and there were no bikinis on the actual public deck. There weren't many women, uh, from what I understand. And, you you know, they forced your hand. They forced your hand, and you did what anybody would have done after being kind of a bait and switch by Chris Jericho. I don't know. Exactly. Yeah, any, mm -hmm. any reasonable person put in that kind of situation – you know, uh, I gotta try and get what was promised as part you of my to get your very money's worth. yeah, exactly very expensive tickets for this. I spent <laughs> all the money that my grandmother gave me for Christmas and my birthday. Uh, wow, so that's, that's a bummer. That is yeah. a bummer. Did you get to meet any wrestlers? I didn't either. I didn't get to what? meet any of the wrestlers. Um, it was really, yeah, it was really frustrating. Uh, I tried uh, talking to uh, Matt Tavin in the uh, yeah. in the in the salad bar line, uh, <laughs> but that that was kind of the area where you saw the fewest amount of fans. Was the salad right. bar line? <laughs> so, I, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, but I they mean, just no disrespect to the wrestling fans. Uh, they just look like I. They look right through me every time I tried wow. to approach one of them. So Did even. They, uh, yeah. Yeah, even Rhett Titus. You remember him in ROH? I know Rhett, he, I know Rhett Titus. Yeah, he used to he used to go out giving people his his That's hotel keys. Key. Yeah. Did he, did he give you his cabin room key at least to stop on by and check out no. his cabin? Well, I mean, I thought this guy was gonna be this is a this is an indie wrestling show that these guys would be protecting kayfabe. I mm -hmm. figured, you know, if a nice looking person, I assumed his character was. Uh, you know, he was a pansexual like Uncle Howard. <laughs> right, I, that I is thought that's, true. that's basically the character, right? <laughs> that is basically the character. He's addicted to love. Rhett yeah, Titus. exactly. Uh, so he I thought, that, yeah, yeah, I figured I'd have no problem getting a, a room key from him, but not a chance, frankly. Not Very a chance, disappointed. But, so the wrestlers wouldn't hang out in your cabin? No, not at you, all. The bikinis were few and far between. Were there, I mean, how, what, what were, I mean, I don't want to disrespect the women that were there. I understand, you know, look, I mean, this is the year 2018. That's nothing funny about making fun of women. But a lot of the women there were spoken for. And I, and the way one other passenger put it is a lot of them look like women who appeared like his aunt. And uh, I don't know. I, I just feel like Chris Jericho kind of owes you in a sense. I mean, are you thinking about some kind of joint uh, settlement here, you know, I mean, you do have a legal like to stand on, I imagine. Exactly. I've been talking to some local attorneys, and I think that we may have a very compelling class action lawsuit to bring here. <laughs> a class I mean, action lawsuit. You were promised bikinis. I was promised bikinis, uh, several bikinis, dozens several. of bikinis at least. From 18 to 49. I mean, if I wanted to just uh, stare at chicks from a distance, I could just, you know, keep looking at Tinder all day. But, yeah. you know, these were supposed to be real, in the flesh. Uh, bikini bodies and yes. Chris Jericho did not deliver. 
Chris Jericho did not deliver. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to need you to clarify and say allegedly just for our legal purposes. Allegedly, uh, Chris allegedly. Jericho did not deliver. And allegedly there were not m enough bikinis for you. Not Des Despite at all. the promises. Oh, my gosh. No well, way. And you know what I think the biggest insult is? I heard there was Diamond Dallas Page doing mandatory morning yoga for everybody on board. What was that like? Well, it was certainly not the way I'm used to seeing yoga in videos. Uh, you know, I usually have yoga in with a few other uh, choice search words on my on my <laughs> oh, Bing no. history. Yes. And uh, you know, we we all see them at the you know, at Ralph's, at Vons, the ladies with the yoga pants. And yes, sir. I mean, when you're not seeing the bikini bodies, you're definitely not seeing the yoga bodies either. Oh man. And uh, well, yeah, the 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 yeah. wrestling nerds and. In yoga pants, I could have done without that, Frank. And let me yeah. tell you, wow, you got an eyeful and not the good kind. Absolutely, Stuart, you've been so brave for coming on here and uh, telling us about giving us some insider information on board the Jericho cruise. Have you ever seen a one-trick pony in fields so happy and free? If you've ever seen a one-trick pony, then you've seen me. Have you ever seen a one-legged dog making his way down the street? If you've ever seen a one-legged dog, then you've seen me. Then you've seen me. I come and stand at every door. And you've seen me. I always leave with less than I had before. And you've seen me. But I can make you smile when the blood it hits the floor Tell me, friend, can you ask for anything more? Tell me, can you ask for anything more? Welcome back to Pillow Talk here. You know, a bit of a longer episode about the Jericho Crew's multiple guests. Right oh, now, we're joined by Dick. We're joined by wrestling royalty. God damn it, Howard. We're joined by wrestling royalty right now, the guy who hung up on me earlier, uh, Jumpin' Jim Grabowski, man, who refused to go on the Jericho Cruise. That's right. You, you, you got that shit right, frankly. I refuse to go on uh, the Jericho Cruise. <laughs> Why is that, Jim? Why did you take this moral stance? Uh, because uh, I was doing it to stand up for the fans. Uh, the, the, uh, really? Yeah, you know, I mean, the bond that we have, you know, the agreement we have as workers with the fans, it's a, uh, it's an unbreakable bond, and I feel as though Jericho maybe went a step too far, you know. <laughs> you it's call what... your fans cashew dicks on a regular daily basis. That's in love. Come on now, you, you know. At the end of the day, you know, I call somebody a cashew dick. It's like you know. Your dad would call you, hey, you little cocksucker. You know, it's a term of endearment. I mean, come on. Wow. We're just busting balls here. No, that's true. That is true. Jim. See, Howard knows what I'm talking about. You yeah. two disgust me sometimes. Let me what, tell you. You know, what times I, don't we disgust you? We got to work. <laughs> yeah. Right. Good fucking grief. The grumpy Some old bags player. for life. Oh, God. So, Anyways. Uh, uh, frankly, so, you, yeah. There's there's a line you just can't cross it as a worker. You know if I, if you know you're charging twenty bucks for a Polaroid, that's one thing. But you know, how much did these marks pay for this shit? Probably over a grand. Some of them. Oh, Jesus Christ. Seven hundred dollars here. Jesus yeah. Horatio Christ. Horatio Sands is actually Jesus Horatio Sands. He was on a what was it? A boat boat trip. Boat trip. Boat trip. Yeah. Hey, a it's, a it's movie killer. <laughs> A movie with more women than the Jericho crew. Uh, I felt so. I just saw those pictures rolling in, and I'm just going, "Oh Jesus! Not a kini to be seen. Not not many even one pieces. No, no, you know, I mean, oh, I'm an old hound. I would have even taken a you know a halter top here and there. Maybe, <laughs> you know, maybe some a woman walking by in some open toe Crocs. You know, I, I, I'm not a beggar. That's true. You are not a beggar. You definitely take what's given to you. I, but, you know, one of us that. boys, though, we got to stand up for the fans. You know, and, and they're the reason that we are able to do this job. And, <laughs> oh, 
you're this is a new side of you, Jim. But I feel like I've always kind of had this side of maybe, you know, I, I, I project as a dominant alpha male. But at the end of the day, I am a fan of wrestling. You know, that's why I got into wrestling. And uh, if we don't have fans, then, you know, we won't have wrestling. Jumping, Jim. You you, uh, you heard about the private deck, right? Where, where the actual, oh, or, where the Brandy Rhodes. Christ. Yes, I saw those pictures. And, you know. If, if it was me and Howard on that cruise, we would have, like, tied a whole bunch of sheets together and tied it to a rail and maybe slid Rep up. Repelled then, on down. Yeah, we would have done some real Navy SEAL shit, you know? Uh, Got to do a panty raid one way or the other, you know? Right. Good, old, good old SEAL Team 69, you and Uncle Howard. <laughs> I'm copywriting that, you fuck. That's brilliant. Seal Team 69 of Uncle Howard and Jumpin' Jim Grabowski want to tie together some clothing, use it as a grappling device, and sneak into the private deck where the beautiful women are. I'm going to get an eyeful yeah. of Flip Gordon's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Flat Earther. Yeah, she, yeah. Flat Earth? <laughs> Uh, I'll show you something, baby, and it won't be flat. I was going to make a similar joke, but you beat me to it. Uh, sick minds think alike, buddy. That's why you and me are best friends, Jim. Good grief. I wouldn't go that far. Best <laughs> friends, best are enemies. Uh, all right, all right. I see the way you're building this feud. Okay. <laughs> Good grief, you two. You know, Howard was just speaking earlier about forming an Ocean's Eleven style crew to break into the private deck on the next Jericho cruise, if there is one. Well, there's not going to be one, and you know why? Why is that? Because I'm putting those motherfuckers out of business. Whoa. What? Yeah. Next spring, your boy Jumpin' Jim is putting together the first annual Jumpin' Jim houseboat. <laughs> Booze cruise at Lake Oroville, oh, California. Wow. Wow. At Lake Oroville. Yeah. Yeah. Any, lineups, anybody in the lineup so far for this cruise? This is a huge scoop. Okay, well, you know, it's a houseboat, so I don't know if I could legally call it a cruise. Okay. It's, it says it comfortably can sleep 12, so I figure, you know, that's, you know, some kind of, you know, Man, be pammy estimate. We could fit a cool 30 in there. <laughs> Those are regulations least. for the boat doesn't sink. Oh, hey, the hey, only regulations. Uh, hey, you know, I got away. Yeah, that got away. There's not going to be a fire department. It's on the water, for God's exactly. sake. Exactly. You're the safest people you can be in the world. But, and I've already done some thinking on this, you know, Franklin. I, I got to work around here. Uh, I'm just going to put up a no fat chick sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's, you can't do that in 2018. Oh, you nah, can't do that. Nah, I'm old. Everyone doesn't say, ah, that's just how he was raised. You know what they say, Jim, is when you're at the sea, it's not 2018. It's that's right. nautical time. Oh, the oh, most erotic time there is. Anyways, that so is right. as far as the lineup goes, I don't believe I could get a ring in there, but I'm uh, bringing in some of my uh, a Friends who specialize in uh, what's called apartment wrestling. No. And we're going we're to lay out a mattress. Uh, I've already got a firm, maybe, from uh, Butch Nelson. Wow. And uh, right. it, it, it is, uh, his tag team partner, Bruiser Bixen Span. <laughs> Bruiser Bixen Span? <laughs> yeah, he's a man young... doesn't leave the, He doesn't leave the apartment. Uh, you know, that must make him a king of his domain then. Yeah. And uh, I've <laughs> talked my old. Uh, my old uh, tag partner, Champagne Wayne, into coming out of retirement. Uh, yeah. Wayne. That's, and, a uh, that's a huge get. And, but our guest of honor is a uh, man who recently made news for getting arrested in Orville. That would be uh, Sean Weiss, a.k.a. Goldberg from the Mighty Ducks. Wait, wait was, he the same, <laughs> was, he the go was he the one in heavyweights, too? Yeah, he was Josh in heavyweights. He was Josh in heavyweights. The big fellow who now doesn't look so good. He's uh, going to be your boat? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, you know. <laughs> hey, uh, if you, uh, you know, you could go drop fifteen hundred bucks to go with Jericho and the Twinks and be treated mm -hmm. like third class citizens True. and uh, bikinis, mm -hmm. or you could give your old buddy Jumpin' Jim two hundred bucks and uh, bring an air mattress, and uh, we'll have a whole weekend of uh, apartment wrestling and 
slides, you know, slide <laughs> off into the water, and uh, you know, I'll be running the grill. And you know, if there's not enough room, you know, bring an inflatable raft, and we'll tie you up to the outside. You can just sleep in the raft. The rest of the day, it'll be it'll be lima ritas and bikinis. And, you know, maybe we'll bring like a a beer bong, like the kids like. Wow. Well, um, can I can I be uh, the Gilligan on this thing? There's always room for you, my friend. Hey, all right, Uncle Howard. What would that make Uncle Howard then? Well, Howard's my wingman. Yeah, there we God. go. Cause I've Good. got a real taste for any bird. Oh, great! You and this, <laughs> don't, don't bring don't bring the British Uncle Howard to talk about fit. British Uncle Howard. Oh, I like this. Can I do? Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> oh no, is that Austin Powers? <laughs> Oh God! Good. So, wow, Jim. I have to say, I admire your entrepreneurial spirit to start your own cruise. This is a this is a big uh, thing here. I think Cody Rhodes might be sweating bullets here. Uh, he's sweating bullets. Yeah, whatever. He could uh, he could go take a flying fuck leap for all I care. Cody, uh, you disrespected me, and that that's it. You know, Dustin. Was the only son of Dusty, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, oh, the, the best oh, part oh. of Cody, the best part of Cody, ran down the side of Dusty's thigh. Jesus Christ! Jesus well, Christ! I, I will personally say that Cody Rhodes is a friend of the show, <laughs> and I would like to personally apologize to you, Cody Rhodes. I wouldn't, but still, you don't and, say anything like that. Look forward to our upcoming Pillow Talk cross. Cody Rhodes merchandise. You mean yeah. like streetwear? Streetwear. streetwear. Yeah, Street. him putting his him putting the American flag over a phoenix was his idea of hip. And like, that come on, man. Very I'm cool. looking forward to the uh, inevitable Cody Rhodes Rastafarian wig. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Christ, I wonder if they got any of those Rastafarian bananas while they were in. Uh, in the cruise there. I don't know where they went to. I guess no, they went to Bahamas, not Jamaica. I take it back. Oh, uh, I'm impressed. I figured they were just tooling around the Gulf. And never <laughs> they no. just parked in a marina all weekend. Uh, <laughs> like, nerds. They went somewhere. I'm amazed. Funny, there was that no photos policy on the cruise. Uh, why do you think that was after the second day, uh, Jim? Well, if you saw a p- bunch of pictures of a bunch of fat fucks wearing Bullet Club shirts, would you want to go? I would not want to go. <laughs> Definitely hey, would not want to go on that cruise. Uh, I, I, you know, I was really looking forward to uh, uh, some of the insider coverage. Like, I heard uh, Kelsey from Super Kicking It was there, and I was yeah. really looking forward to her perspective. And uh, as far as I could tell, uh, she didn't see shit. No, no, and uh, she she might not have counted to the bikini. She may not have brought one. She might have bought a full uh, suit for all we know. And sure, she's, her, a, right? she's a modest girl, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're she's, not she's giving lovely. her a hard time. She, no, she's lovely. She is yeah, lovely. I'm just joshing yeah. with Kelsey. That's the, she's just having a laugh. Uh, you know, I was just just, I kept hitting refresh. You know, seeing if maybe she was, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, maybe show off some, some toes or something. <laughs> so like God, Good but you know, hey, you know, you. Know, you 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 get to be an old fart like me, Franklin. You'll 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 take every little victory wherever you fight. One day you'll understand. Christ, yeah. you too. You and Uncle Howard are We're just a couple of crazy <laughs> creeps. <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Lock I up your daughters. Lock up your daughters. Now, I jump in, Jim. Uh, b- before we close off the segment about the Jericho Cruise, I was reading a tweet of yours the other day where you mentioned you've pounded off to uh, Shelley Long uh, from Cheers, Correct. Uh, Julie Bowen from Modern Family, uh, and, yes, and uh, Sarah Highland, who's 27 and plays the daughter of Julie Bowen on Modern Family. And you're What's taking, wrong with that? you take pride in pleasure in yourself the three generations of a fictional family a grandmother the mother and the daughter uh i mean are you disappointed that shelly long's character died on modern family uh not or did really you stop stroking it to her <laughs> yeah you know i mean it's like if i ever really wanted to go back to the shelly long i got you know 30 years of spank bank but i've True. also got i've also got netflix so i could just go True. watch cheers so I just, killing I just, 
I just thought it was quite the bicentennial man of you to nut to three generations of women. And I was trying to present you as an ally saying, A, you don't discriminate in age, but you couldn't even give me that. I was trying to put you over, Howard. As, I mean, Howard, a uh, gym. I'm used to calling out Howard and being an uncivilized pervert. But I was, I was trying to give you the rub there. Is that an industry term I can use? I'll allow it. But uh, Thank you. Frank, Frankie, you, when you get to be my age, when you've... I'm going to use my serious voice here. Uh, when <laughs> you get to be my age. Your Owen okay. voice. Your, my your somebody Owen voice. just died in the ring voice. I have the unfortunate duty to inform you that uh, due to 30 years on the floor uh, or out of the, out of the road and uh, you know bumps, uh, I am a oh, bit of a oh. pervert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Shocking stuff. That's Howard. a I mean, brave how, uh, thing to admit. Jumping Jim and admitting he's a pervert. And on that note, uh, is there anything you want to plug before we, we wrap it up here, Jim? Yeah, I'd like to plug my I nah. <laughs> yeah, just you know, start saving up, you know, go start Good saving watch, up in cans, bottles, and save it up for uh, for uh jumping Jim's uh booze cruise next uh, next spring. We have next a book spring. to date. <laughs> I haven't the booked a date yet, but I've got all the talent lined up. The Jumpin' Jim Bruce, Blue, what is it, Booze Cruise? <laughs> I mean, I, I I think you should steal one of those duck tours. I'm uh, not steal, uh, borrow, you know, a duck tour since they're going out of business soon. And, uh, you know, actually fit some more people in there. I don't know. This is some yeah, advice. That's not a bad idea. I'll take that, uh, you know, I'll take that under advisement. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, Jumpin' Jim, uh, as always, we like to tell our fans one last thing before the show ends. I don't know if you want to take the honors on this one. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, make sure you wash your ass. Yeah, and go fuck yourselves. Yeah, go fuck yourselves, nerds. <laughs> Have you ever seen a scarecrow filled with nothing but dust and weeds? If you ever seen that scarecrow, then you've seen me. Have you ever seen a one-armed man punching at nothing but the breeze? Have you ever seen a one-armed man, then you seen me? Then you seen me come and stand at every door. Then you seen me always leave with less than I had before. Then you seen me. But I can make you smile when the blood it hits the floor. Tell me, friend, can you ask for anything more? Tell me, can you ask for?